Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this session, we will learn how to add database to existing availability group cluster. There are many options while doing this, and you should know each option so that you can choose the best and optimal while maintaining your production server. Okay, so first I, I have this new AG database, and I want to add this database to this AG cluster. For this, I, I will just right click and click Add Database and click Next and then I need to choose New AG Database to add but it is not allowing me to choose. Why? Because there are some pre-requirements. The first pre-requirement to add uh, database to AG is a recovery option should be always full. Okay, as you can see it's already full in my case so First requirements, it's already there, okay? And we are meeting this requirement. The next requirement is you should take full database backup of this database, okay? Right click and to choose full and take backup to this location. Click OK. And now you can see backup already ready. Now we are ready to, to add this database. Right click again and click new add database and click next now you can see i meeting i met the requirements right prerequisites and i can add right as a database you cannot do that still why because for this database for example full recovery mode is required and for this database full backup is required okay you can see from here so we are meeting all re requirements and click next then click connect and we will connect to secondary replica click next okay here is the important point there are four initial data synchronization options automatic seeding full database backup join only and skip initial data synchronization okay let's start with automatic seeding automatic seeding automatically creates database for every selected secondary replica automatic seeding requires that the data and log file paths are the same on every SQL Server replica. Okay, for example, we have this database in primary. Then we add this database to AG cluster in primary with automatic seeding option. Okay, right after this, right after this, SQL Server automatically creates backup by using VDI and moves this backup to secondary using log stream transport. Okay, then the same database with the same file path appear in secondary. Then synchronization starts and SQL Server synchronizes any incremental data from this point. And you are ready. Very simple technique and easy to use, right? Let me show you. So here we are back to our uh, adding process. So I will choose an automatic seeding, right? And click next and click next and finish. Now, our, you can see our database has been added successfully. Click close and you can see here now new AG database, right? So, and if you right click and refresh, new AG database become, became synchronized in primary, okay? And it has been added in primary. What about secondary? If you go to secondary and refresh here, you can see the database already also added in secondary, okay? It is automatically seeded in secondary, right? Then refresh and you can see, it has, you can see here, it has also became synchronized in secondary. So this is called automatic seeding and very much um, simple to use and uh, easy and fast to use. But there are some challenges with this technique. First, automatic seeding like, uh, is a technique which requires the same pass in secondary, right? If you cannot create the same pass in secondary, you should not use this option. Secondly, if you have big database like 1 terabyte, 10 terabyte, do not use this method. This method is for comparatively small databases like 500, 400 GB, right? But for one terabyte, ten terabyte, if you if you choose uh, this option for this kind of databases, it might take hours 
for initial data synchronization and it might impact your production servers. Let's switch to another technique, full database and log backup. If you look, uh, select this option, SQL Server starts data synchronization by performing full database and log backup at specified share path for each database. These databases are restored to each secondary and joined to availability group. For example, you add a database in primary by using this technique. As soon as database added, SQL Server starts taking full and transaction log backups as specify, at specified shared path. Okay? When backup is finished, these backups will be transferred from primary to secondary and uh, restored in the secondary. Then synchronization starts and remaining incremental data will be transferred. As you can see, compared to automatic seeding, in this case, you need to set shared path. Let's try this technique also. So you can see here, I have new AG database, right? New AG database two, and I need to add this database. Right click, add database and click next. Okay, I will select this database and click next. Connect secondary again. Okay, I will choose this full database, okay? But before this, I need to specify shared path, right? This path should be um, available, right? Should be accessible from both primary and secondary. Okay, for this, I will just create this path in pr my primary. I will just click, okay, here and click, right click, new, and then here like um, backup shared location, let's say and uh, right click properties sharing share right and i will just select every one okay okay everyone add and click read write and click share okay now this place is available from both primary and secondary so i uh, click again uh, sorry about this right click okay pick up properties and sharing you just copy this location copy okay and come here and paste it okay click next okay now click next and click finish okay now you can see the database already added right and click close if you go again to that location backup shared location you can see transaction and full backup uh, files right okay so uh the sql server just took backup here and transferred the same to secondary okay let's see secondary click refresh and you can see the same database appeared also in secondary because it has been restored. This backups has been restored in secondary automatically, right? If you right click and refresh, okay? And uh, new AG, second one also added, right? So like automatic seeding, there are some challenges with this technique also. Firstly, taking backups might be time consuming and as a result, Initial data synchronization might take a lot of time. Then the backups need to be transferred over network to secondary replica, which can consume significant network bandwidth and also time, right? You need also shared storage for backups. So from this, we can see main challenge with automatic seeding and this backup option is database size. If database size is very much big, these options like backup and um, automatic seeding options might be very slow and might might not work for you, okay? So what to do if you have huge databases? You should use next option, join only. Join only option starts data synchronization where you have already restored database and log backups to each secondary server. For example, you have this database in primary and you have taken backups of this database by yourself. This is very big database and you want to add this database, right? For example, firstly, you create copy of these backups in secondary 
you just copy and paste, okay, backups. Or you can just share this the same storage with secondary, okay? Both are okay. As long as this secondary can access this backup, both are okay. Second step, you restore these backups with no recovery option. Okay, this is very much important. The database should be restored with no recovery. Third step, you add this database in primary with join only option. As soon as you add in primary with join only, the same database in secondary will be added to the same AG cluster and synchronization begins. That's all. Let me show you. Okay, let's use this technique and try to add this new AG database 3. Okay, so I already took uh, transaction log backup and full backup for this database. And I copy and pasted the same uh, backups to the secondary. Okay, if I go there, you can see my backup in secondary. Okay, I already copy and pasted. Then I, I restore these backups in secondary first. I will right click restore database and click device click add and uh, what was that my backup in secondary okay i will choose both of them click okay click okay okay now database and log backup and go to options okay and click no recovery okay you should not forget this one then click okay Okay, click OK. Now you can see our database added, but it is in restoring state. Okay, it did not become synchronized yet because we did not add database yet, right? In primary. Now we will go back to primary here, SQL VM1 primary, and add this database. Click right click and uh, add database. Click next. Click new AG, this one, three, and uh, click OK, connect, click OK, and join only, OK? Now click next, click next, click finish. OK, click close. Now you can see the database has been added, new AG database three, right? And the right click, and you can see this became synchronized. What about secondary? We go and it is currently restoring, right? Let's refresh. Okay, now you can see it has been added and it became synchronized. Okay, and what about here? Right click and AG database. Okay, it became also synchronized and healthy state. Okay, okay, we are finished. As you have seen, join only has some challenges. First one is manual preparation. Then it might be time consuming and you might need some storage to temporarily save backups to restore it in secondary. Okay. To summarize, if you have very big database with for, for example, one terabyte or 10 terabyte, you should use join only. Okay. But for small database, for example, 500, 400 uh, GB databases, you can use automatic seeding or backup options. Of course, it depends on your network vendors also, but uh, generally, for small databases, we use automatic seeding. For big database, join only. Okay. Okay. We have one last option left, which is skip initial data synchronization. This option is nearly the same with join only, with a little differences. Let me show you. So, you have this database in primary. You did not restore database in secondary yet. In this case, you can just add database to AG cluster with this skip initial data synchronization option. As a result, database is added only in primary. Then you move this database backups to secondary, I mean copy and paste, uh, and restore with no recovery. Finally, you manually run alter command in secondary and add this database to AG cluster. As soon as database is, is added um, in secondary, synchronization starts. That's all. Let me show you. Here I have this new AG database. Let me add this with skip option. First, I'll right click 
I, di I did not, first of all, I did not uh, add this database yet anyway in secondary replica, okay? You can see I don't have this database and I did not restore it yet. Therefore, I will just skip initial synchronization, okay? So right click and add database, click next. I will choose this database, click OK, connect, click OK, connect, click next and skip. Okay, skip. Then I will just click finish. Okay, click close. You can see here database has been added in primary. Okay, and it became synchronized in primary. Okay, but if you go to secondary, you don't see any kind of database, right? It is only available in primary. It did not yet has been added here. You can see it did not yet has been added in secondary yet. Okay, warning you can see. If you want to add, what you should do is then uh, you just copy and paste backup of this database, right? Transaction and full backup and restore it with no recovery. Okay, right click, restore, and click new database. And, uh, and uh, here you can see new device okay uh, let's choose our file where is that my backup in secondary okay and we will choose this one secondary click ok and go to options and with no recovery okay click ok click ok now it you can see it became recovery Restoring state, right? So we will run this alter command alter, okay, and database, right? Database, and you just choose your database here and uh, set HADR availab availability, such as availability group equal to my ag name okay my ag name ag cluster right so we will just choose this one ag cluster okay let's run this okay now you can see we have added it and if you right click and refresh you can see now we have been able to add database okay so we have been able to go through each options uh, while adding database to availability group and each option has its drawbacks and challenges and you should choose each option depending on your infrastructure depending on your database size thank you